A week of doing nothing is as impactful as two days of recording. Is that ju just technical support or are they really... Uh, no, I mean, in a, a lot of the... Uh, uh, I think once you've finished a record and you look back on it, you sort of telescope all the creative moments and think... and all the moments where you made little breakthroughs and you remember the, the takes that you did of this vocal or that guitar part and you, you tend to telescope all those things and think that that is how you make a record and you remember it like those parts of the of the stages of making a record. But in reality, it's a lot of the things where you're not even in the studio. It's a lot, a lot of the things that contribute to a record are the times when you're, you know, walking on the pier laughing or taking a dogs for a walk or sitting, getting drunk and, and discussing something or playing cards and just having kind of uh, Jamaican nights where you make rum cocktails and pina coladas. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that really make a record. And, you know, Bill and Jessica are an absolutely integral part of that. You know, it sets up, a, sets up the, the kind of uh, environment for us. And they know when to throw us in the car and drive us off somewhere where things, where we're just hitting a brick wall. And if it was up to us, we'd carry on and try and smash through the wall. And they're just like, get in the car, we're gonna go and get drunk. <laughs> it just works, you know, you go away for a few hours, come back and you're all fired up, you've talked about it. You've, and you just go, go in, bang, 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 and it work. Then the, then the song becomes exactly how it should have been. So the things we don't hear, but they, they are there. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's just that, I think those things are as important as the actual playing. I mean, when you make a record, you realize that, that sometimes a week of doing nothing is as impactful as two days of recording. You know, sometimes it's the time you need away from it, you know. Are those periods that you are in the studio actually, are those intense or are you really laid back when you're together and working on stuff? It's, oh, it's, intense. it's intense, but it's kind of back and forth. I mean, like you said, there's days where we don't work on music, we do everything else, and then there's days where we do nothing but music all day, you know. It depends what mood you're in, how intense it is. On most songs, uh, you're singing together, but not, not in a classical, duet, romantic kind of way, most of the time. Why not? Why not use this man-woman thing and... Because... I think to do that, you'd have to write um, as a character, you know. You, and and, and some, sometimes, sometimes those things are, are the right thing for a song. But some, a lot of the time, they're not. You know what I mean? If we had, to, if we were writing this backwards and forwards kind of. Um, Versus, you know, you sing one to me, you sing one to the other. Then, then they, they would just have to be characters all the time. This represents two people singing this to each other, and it's, you know, you can't, you can't do that forever, you know. And I like this uh, dual vocal thing. I like, I like that. I, it's my favourite kind of gang in a way. It's, it's a two-person gang, a gang of two people. Hmm. You know, it's, I just like it. It's really. Uh, You're a scary gang. It hits me in everything, you know, in that sort of. Uh, Cinema, literature, two-person gang is a is a good one. Can you name some? Well, obvious ones: Bonnie and Clyde, Florence Ray and Audrey Morpan, you know, um, Laurel and Hardy. The list is ended. <laughs>